This is Farmland. Coming up, ICSA Animal Health and Welfare Chairman Hugh Farrell will be here to outline why farmers are pushing back on proposed recommendations to eradicate bovine TB by 2030. And the ICBF's Chris Daly will be in studio to discuss early results emerging from the new Beef Environmental Efficiency Pilot Scheme. But first, our reporter Emma Gilson travelled to Wicklow to meet a beef and sheep farmer who has been grappling with TB outbreaks for years. Bovine tuberculosis is a serious and costly issue which has affected almost every farmer in the country in some way or another. Despite substantial efforts to eradicate the disease, it is still very prevalent in the country. Agrodan travelled to the worst affected county to hear one farmer's take on the issue. My name is Patrick Nuttall. I farm in Roundwood in County Wicklow. The farm is about 110 hectares in size, or we have about 25 hectares of commercial forestry. We keep about 450 breeding yews to 500 and about 40 to 50 suckler cows, depending on how many we've lost to TB at the time. I lost a herd in 98. We never had a reaction to the farm till 98. We never had a and we lost everything in one test. So I've sort of got used to it at this stage. We had odds reactors till about 2008 and then since 2008 onwards we've been pretty much continuously locked up every so often I get released and most of the time I'm restricted. The longest stretch I've done is two and a half years restricted but you just live with it and get on with it. Well it stops you really investing big money on your cows because you never know when they're going to be here or gone and it's very hard to I keep running a fairly cheap and cheerful system. They're a black limmy, British Frisian based cow. We're crossing back to an Angus, something simple. And you can't really invest big money in cows because just, they're not going to be there next week or whenever the next test is. You just don't know what you're going to lose next time. East Wicklow is number one in animals per thousand at the moment and number one in herd incidents. And we're pretty much number one all the time for the wrong reasons. And we are particularly a high risk area where Roundwood area is renowned for being a bad area for TB. And we have a lot of deer. We do have badgers, but our badgers have always been clear of TB. When we lost the herd in 98, we took our badgers out. They were clear, and they've always been clear. Every time we take them out, we get them tested, and they've never once showed up with TB. We were always getting t uh, deer with TB up in this area. As best, all our sheds you can see are, we pull doors across at night and keep the deer and badgers out of the thing. We buy beef in, but it's tipped up in the shed with a sheet of doors so they can't get into it there. But that's as much security as we can do to it. We do a lot of shooting of deer here as well. We are on a section 42 at the moment that we can shoot deer out of season. And I would have a fair few shooters come shooting here. We asked Patrick if he thought enough was being done to eradicate this disease and what his thoughts on the Badger vaccination programme are. Uh, in 2014, the department did a deer cull in this area and they shot 103 deer and 17% of them showed up with TB and they sort of try to bury the, they've done nothing about the information, they just, they made up projects and stuff like that, but realistically, they're not doing enough. They need to do, have a full-time shooter here in the area. Anywhere there's bad areas of TB, there should be, they put their own man in, who's a good shot, get him to reduce the numbers down and hopefully improve the chances of farmers going clear. By the sounds of it, we're going to be the last to get vaccinated. I think they, we're not deemed as an important county. There's only 1,500 herds in East Wicklow. There's 15,000 in Cork and there's 115,000 in the whole of Ireland. So their view is you're only 1%, you're not that important. So why would we spend money on you, basically? We're joined by Hugh Farrell, the Animal Health and Welfare Chairman of the ICSA. Hugh, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Claire, for inviting us in here today. Hugh, Hugh um, the TB Stakeholder Forum has submitted its first report to the Minister for Agriculture on recommendations to eradicate TB by 2030. Uh, some of the recommendations that have been agreed by all those in the stakeholder forum, uh, the provision of advice, biosecurity advice to farmers, uh, black spot action plans, uh, reducing risk posed by badgers and deer, increased focus on herds that require enhanced support due to their TB history, and uh, the provision of a single point of contact for herd owners affected by TB breakdowns. Um, so a lot of measures are, are there agreed in the report, broadly agreed, but the ICSA says it's incomplete. Why? Well, it's incomplete because uh, this started last September and through the TB forum at all stages, there was a bilateral meeting and the forum meetings, and there was made up of two parts, the uh, compensation and costings and uh, disease. And as far as you're reading out there, it's all based on disease. And it was agreed that we would put in a partial report into the minister to let him know where we were going, how far on we had achieved. But in the case of that then, there was a cost analysis study being done 
on the costing of the TB and the compensation and all that had to be dealt with. Reluctantly, it has been pushed back. So then it was next to finalised. This report went to the minister. And to our amaze then, or shock, it was where it's been decided then to roll it out in the autumn. And no way this can be possible, but as far as we are concerned, and I'd say other farm par- parties, it is always as a partial report, a guide, until such time as the two parts are put together, and then we have a final decision on where we're going, was one hand in hand with the other. So there's no point in us being pushed into a corner or being led by the way, and all of a sudden we're getting nothing for our farmers in compensation. It was all based on disease and party and the department's behalf. So Hugh, since 1954, um, Ireland has culled around 2.5 million BTB reactor animals um, to eradicate TB in the state. Uh, now that has led to a cost of about 5.5 billion shared out between farmers, uh, the state and the EU. Uh, how would you describe farmers' contributions to that cost? And can you break down where the costs are there for the farmer? Well, uh, the first and uh, the first costings would be the hair testing, paying for testing every year, and annual tests and private testing, somewhere in excess of twenty five million. Uh, the labour and the cost of maybe segmented farms, uh, putting in cattle, loss of two days, getting help, which is an anonymous cost, like. As we brought it up at the forum, we were wanted to co- uh, be paid for labour and for t- that all to be built into the full cost and time. And their reply was that farmers, how would you cost them as labour because they're making no money? Well, we are being subsidised or trying to farm there and we're taking very low money for our produce. And this is where it's reflecting back in our costings. So we're entitled to be respected and paid the same as anyone else, whether the department official or who they may be, everybody's labour has a price on it. And we are no different. And while the comp- the current compensation scheme is mentioned in the report and the department has said it will assess the scheme as it stands, um, there's no guarantee that there will be increases there in compensation down the line. Well, as a department, I think they came in with a baton <laughs> or a, maybe a bit strong in a word saying a baton in the hand, but they had two, hand, two different things, and that was disease and compensation. And all that was in their head was to get the board in the March, the information, categorisation on it, and categorisation of farmers. That was two initiatives, really, out of this form at one stage, it was all they were after, which we were totally against. But it was going to finish a lot of farmers. It was going to devalue their stock and leave a lot amount of money, and maybe break them. And that was the reason why we stood very strong on that there. Yeah. Now for us, this isn't acceptable. Like, they has to move on compensation. And as we were told the last day, there was no move, that's why they didn't move on compensation. But as you have read out there now, the Minister has acknowledged eight or 10 different achievements that has been done. And to us that is progress and progress in a positive way. So why now will the department not respect that and come forward and work with us now on the compensation and get that resolved that is as much, and that is very important for viability. As I have seen farmers there, who are hill up over long periods of time, lost their farm income because maybe they get them too clear for your tests, then come back in a three month test and close them up again, which is not a clear herd. And they're classing that as a break in a farmer's testing that he was clear. It's a cleared herd is a six months break. And breaking them of an income supplement, and they have no other income supp- uh, any income of any other sort, and can't sell cattle as a did a stock farmer. They were totally dependent on it. So a lot of changes has to be made there. And in other cases, that's just only one example. So as it stands, the measures that are outlined there in the report, does the ICSA believe that TB eradication can be achieved by 2030 uh, by following those proposals that have been put forward? A lot of them proposals are there, maybe they're going to be implemented more than what they are. Some of them is new and some of them hasn't changed a lot. But there's one there at the very end there where you're talking about one single point of contact there. you know. And I've seen their frustration there ringing on behalf of farmers and you ring the local office or whatever office it may be. And all of a sudden you're sent back to a switch somewhere else. Then you don't get through. You're depending on somebody to come back to you. May or may not come back to you. What you want is very important, maybe within an hour that day or hours.
as we witnessed yesterday morning with the removal of reactors off a of farm. And that had to be dealt with in a matter of an hour or so, or less nothing was happening. So I think it's time now to start to brief their staff and have them more favour with what it is. Like if you have one contact in any office, well then you ring in their off sick or holidays, nobody can brief them. How long do we wait? Two, three weeks? That's not acceptable. It's not acceptable in any business and it can't be here. We, it's time we were respected as a human being as, a, as a, any other individual in a business. Not as just somebody out there that we can push one side. And uh, Hugh, in addition to the cost, there's also the psychological, the stress, the personal health impacts um, on the farmer, on the farm families of dealing with a TB breakdown, as, as Patrick highlighted there in the VT. So that's another area that, that has to be taken very seriously by the Minister. Well, the Minister, yes, and this uh, department more so, because they're implementing and they're dealing with the farmers. Like, I've seen one farmer there, like, had two different departments on Monday in relation to cattle going yesterday. We had to get on to another official yesterday morning. Over the last five weeks or six, I don't know how many has dealt with that man. And some of the things I've said to him, I won't repeat here, because it's, it's, I can't do it. And the pressure to put on him. The man was totally over his head. i seen yesterday morning, I witnessed it, sitting in a jeep with the man. And him banging the steering and getting out and banging the door heading for a lake. He was that frustrated with the whole system, with reactors. And his income gone after building it up over 30 years. There's no respect given for a person or the mental effect it has on people. And it's not only that farmer, it's the people living in the house with him. His family, maybe breakdowns in marriages, financial struggle. It is a lot of bigger issues than what we know. So finally, Hugh, just your message to uh, the Minister for Agriculture as the report now has been submitted and they're talking about the strategy, uh, renewed strategy coming out in autumn. What's your message? Well, to us as farmers, uh, representations, there's no new strategy coming out in the autumn. It can't until such thing as the thing is finalised. That's what the forum was set up for at the beginning and was never decided as just a disease policy uh, forum. It was always a combined so I guess the Minister will stand to his word and continue to see it through. And when that is through, and hopefully it will be late up, and it will be finished, and then he can release it, but not until such time as we have compensation and cautions delivered and a bit of negotiations done on that, and then we're willing to sign off. Hugh, we'll leave it there. Thanks very much for coming in to us. Thank you, Claire. Now, farmers are busy weighing cows and calves as part of the new BEEP scheme. Niall Claffey has this report. The Beef Environmental Efficiency Pilot, or BEEP, was launched by the Minister for Agriculture, Food and the Marine, Michael Creed, on the 30th of January 2019. The funding has been made available by the Department for the pilot, which aims to increase the economic and environmental efficiency of Ireland's suckler herd. It focuses on improving the weaning efficiency of suckler cows by collecting live weight of them and their offspring pre-weaning. Cows and calves must be weighed on farm using a weighing scale as an indicator. A platform weighing scales can be placed in a cattle crush and the animals are weighed as they pass over it. Farmers who do not own a scales can rent one from Marts and Co-ops nationwide. However, the scales will have to be registered with the ICBF before weighing is carrying out. All suckler calves born from the 1st of July 2018 through to the 30th of June 2019 and their dams are eligible for the pilot. Calves must be weighed before they are weaned and cows and calves must be weighed on the same day. From there, these weights must be submitted between the 8th of March to the 1st of November 2019. In addition, weights must be submitted to the ICBF database within seven days of the animals being weighed on farm. Once these terms and conditions have been adhered to, all participants will receive a payment of €40 Euro per calf in December 2019. The ICBF will compile a report which will display both cow and calf performance. Farmers can use this information when selecting cows for culling or breeding going forward. The ultimate aim is to identify a herd of cows with the ability to produce heavy weanlings, thus generating a higher weaning efficiency figure. Furthermore, according to the ICBF, breeding a more efficient cow which meets the necessary weight, fertility and calf weaning weight targets will significantly reduce the amount of greenhouse gases generated per kilogram of beef produced. The ICBF's Chris Daly joins us now. Chris, thanks very much for coming in to us. No problem, Claire. Good to be so, here. so, Chris, Niall has outlined the timeline of event, events there on the introduction of the beef scheme. But can you just reflect on why this scheme was established and why we're weighing cows and calves? Yeah, no problem. So as the title of the programme suggests, it's called a Beef Environmental Efficiency Programme. It's a Department of Agriculture pilot that has been put in place to try and improve efficiencies on our suckler herds. 
and that's being done through weighing both cows and calves. So 20 million euros has been made available by the Department of Agriculture to fund it. It's looking to get about half a million cow-calf pairs weighed in the 12 months and the reference period is calves born from the 1st of July 2018 to the 30th of June 2019. And by recording weights, farmers will benefit through management on, on their own farms by having the weights to hand and being able to identify animals that are maybe not performing very well or performing very well and being able to make potential breeding or calling decisions on their own farms. But it's also hugely significant for ICBF and that we have a huge increase in the amount of data coming into the to the to the database which will increase the accuracy and the reliabilities of the Eurostar indexes. So it's a hugely significant uh, pilot scheme that the Department of Agriculture put in place for the soccer industry. And so Chris it's still at the early stages but there are initial results in um, around 70,000 cow-calf pairs have been recorded to date. Um, how is it shaping up at the moment? Yeah so as you say about 70,000 cow-calf pairs and it, that's increasing weekly as we're coming into to peak season now as a lot of spring cows and calves are being weighed. The early picture is very, very positive. So we've done some initial analysis on about the first 40,000 cow-calf pair weights that came in. And what it's showing, and bear in mind, this is before any of the weight data has flown into the indexes of these cows, but what it's showing is the five-star cows are on average coming in at 27 kilos lighter, but they're producing a calf at, a, at an adjusted 200-day weight of 17 kilos heavier. Now, there's a new concept for a lot of suckler farmers out there, which is a cow-calf weaning percentage. And what that is, is you get the calf's weight at 200 days and you express that as a percentage of the cow's mature weight. And these five-star cows have a 5% higher uh, cow-calf weaning percentage, which is hugely significant because what, what the, the index is trying to do is breed a more efficient animal. And I suppose the, the target of the sector in general is that per kilo of beef produced, that we try and reduce our greenhouse gas emissions um, as, as, as much as possible. And well, Chris, so we have to mention, I suppose, there has been a lot of criticism out there about the BDGP scheme. So the initial results are showing that there, there is evidence that the, the higher rated cows are producing the goods. Yeah, absolutely. As I said, 27 kilos lighter for the cows themselves, but producing calves at an adjusted 200 day weight of 17 kilos heavier. So a lighter cow requires less maintenance, but you've higher output through a heavier calf as well, which is very, very positive. So right, the initial the initial outlook is good at the moment. Yeah. But yeah. where are the challenges? Um, are farmers? What's the feedback like from farmers on the ground? Um, are there concerns about say increase in workload? Um, some farmers have expressed concerns about heavy cows being penalised. Um, what's your response to that? I suppose there's a couple of questions there. So in terms of the actual weighing itself, feedback has been very positive from farmers. We have had very few farmers come to us and say, you know, weighing calves is a very onerous task, I suppose. The 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 payment per cow calf pair is, is forty euros. So it's quite a significant payment when you when you consider the workload involved in weighing weighing a cow and calf. It's it's a, provided obviously facilities are reasonably good and bear in mind that every farmer is required to have adequate facilities to carry out T B testing, so a cattle crush on farm. It's the same facilities are being used for weighing. So very few farmers have, have come to us and said that it's an, it's an onerous, it's, it's a difficult thing to do. Um, if you think about weighing cows and calves, and particularly cows, and you mentioned weighing heavy cows, throughout a cow's lifetime they go through a crush to be TB tested. If they're sick they need to be dosed or in, examined by a vet or maybe they're being AI'd. They're all quite invasive kind of procedures, but if you think about weighing, all the animal is doing is walking through the crush onto a platform and out again. So of all the reasons that a cow would go through a crush, it's probably the most stress-free reason that they would have to do it. Now, I completely accept that it's another task for the farmer to do in the year, but that's why the Department of Agriculture have put, put in place the 40 euro payment to weigh the cow and calf to offset any increased labour or um, challenges that farmers may have uh, weighing the animals. So Chris, there's lots of advantages basically of having a, a more efficiency in the system. Um, but I suppose at the moment there is such a focus on climate change and on ag the agricultural sector getting emissions down by 10 to 15% by 2030. Um, what are the environmental benefits of the beef scheme in terms of greenhouse gas emission production yeah. per kilo? Well, like I alluded to earlier, by weighing animals, you're able to identify the most efficient ones. Uh, we currently have just under a million suckler cows in the country. 
it's hard to see where those numbers are going to go but what we need to ensure is for every suckler cow that she's number one producing a calf so that's probably part of BDGP in producing a more fertile animal through identifying them through uh, Eurostar indexes but we also need to be collecting weight data so we need to identify cows that are moderately sized you know we don't want tiny little cows or we don't want very large cows a moderately sized cow that's giving a good weanling so that she's I suppose from a farmer's point of view, financially paying her way, but from an environmental point of view, that she's justifying her own existence on farm as well. Currently, if you take our, our average calves per cow per year figure in Ireland, we're at about 0.82, which means that there's about one in five suckler cows not producing a calf in a year. And that is a big blot in the copybook in terms of, from the point of view of that one cow, she still has to be fed, she's still producing methane, but she's not producing a calf for it. So that's quite significant and we need to increase the efficiencies in the herd and weighing animals is a huge step forward in doing that. And um, finally, Chris, the beef sector over the course of the past year, it's been gruelling. It's been so difficult for, for the sector out there. We've had protests, we've had the Mercosur deal, emergency funds being made available from the EU. Um, in terms of the financial return of the beef scheme to the farmer on the ground, uh, what kind of certainty can it provide? Um, inside the farm gate? I mean, the average suckler herd size in beef is approximately 20 cows. So by 40 euros per cow calf pair, it's, a, it's, a, it's an average of 800 euros of payment for, per, per herd. I mean, it's, it's not hugely significant, but at the same time, it's, it's, a, it's a relatively significant payment for not a huge amount of work when you, when you, when you think about it at the end of the day. Um, it's by no means going to solve any huge uh, financial challenges in the sector, but from the, a department's point of view for the amount of work involved in getting hugely significant uh, data into the ICBF database to try and make the herd more, the national herd more efficient, it's, it, it is a significant payment in that regard for farmers. We'll leave it there. Thank you very much for joining us, Chris. No problem. That's it for this season of Farmland. As always, if you have any comments or feedback, you can get in touch with us on any of our platforms. We'll be back again soon. See you then.